The Black Arrow by Robert Louis Stevenson Book Four Chapter Five Earl Risingham Earl Risingham, although by far the most important person then in Shoreby, was poorly lodged in the house of a private gentleman upon the extreme outskirts of the town. Nothing but the armed men at the doors, and the mounted messengers that kept arriving and departing, announced the temporary residence of a great lord. Thus it was that, from lack of space, Dick and Lawless were clapped into the same apartment. "'Well spoken, Master Richard,' said the outlaw. "'It was excellently well spoken, and, for my part, I thank you cordially. Here we are in good hands. We shall be justly tried, and, some time this evening, decently hanged on the same tree.' "'Indeed, my poor friend, I do believe it,' answered Dick. "'Yet have we a string to our bow,' returned Lawless. Ellis Duckworth is a man out of ten thousand. He holdeth you right near his heart, both for your own and for your father's sake. And knowing you guiltless of this fact, he will stir earth and heaven to bear you clear. It may not be, said Dick. What can he do? He hath but a handful. Alack, if it were but to-morrow, could I but keep a certain tryst an hour before noon to-morrow— all were, I think, otherwise. But now there is no help. Well, concluded Lawless, and you will stand to it for my innocence, I will stand to it for yours, and that stoutly. It shall not avail us. But an I be to hang, it shall not be for lack of swearing. And then, while Dick gave himself over to his reflections, the old rogue curled himself down into a corner pulled his monkish hood about his face, and composed himself to sleep. Soon he was loudly snoring, so utterly had his long life of hardship and adventure blunted the sense of apprehension. It was long afternoon, and the day was already failing, before the door was opened and Dick taken forth and led upstairs to where, in a warm cabinet, Earl Risingham sat musing over the fire. On his captive's entrance he looked up. "'Sir,' he said, "'I knew your father, who was a man of honour, and this inclineth me to be the more lenient. But I may not hide from you that heavy charges lie against your character. You do consort with murderers and robbers. Upon a clear probation ye have carried war against the king's peace.' Ye are suspected to have piratically seized upon a ship. Ye are found skulking with a counterfeit presentment in your enemy's house. A man is slain that very evening. Add it like you, my lord, Dick interposed. I will at once avow my guilt, such as it is. I slew this fellow Rudder, and to the proof, searching in his bosom, here is a letter from his wallet. Lord Risingham took the letter, and opened and read it twice. "'Ye have read this?' he inquired. "'I have read it,' answered Dick. "'Are ye for York or Lancaster?' the Earl demanded. "'My lord, it was but a little while back that I was asked that question, and knew not how to answer it,' said Dick. "'But having answered once, I will not vary. My lord, I am for York.' The Earl nodded approvingly. "'Honestly replied,' he said. "'But wherefore, then, deliver me this letter?' "'Nay, but against traitors, my lord, are not all sides arrayed?' cried Dick. "'I would they were, young gentlemen,' returned the Earl. "'And I do, at least, to prove your saying. There is more youth than guile in you, I do perceive.' and were not Sir Daniel a mighty man upon our side, I were half tempted to espouse your quarrel. For I have inquired, and it appears ye have been hardly dealt with, and have much excuse. But look ye, sir, I am, before all else, a leader in the Queen's interest, and though by nature a just man, as I believe, and leaning even to the excess of mercy— 
yet must I order my goings for my party's interest, and, to keep Sir Daniel, I would go far about. "'My lord,' returned Dick, "'ye will think me very bold to counsel you, but do you count upon Sir Daniel's faith? Methought he had changed sides intolerably often.' "'Nay, it is the way of England. What would ye have?' the earl demanded. "'But ye are unjust to the knight of Tunstall, and, as faith goes, in this unfaithful generation, he hath of late been honourably true to us of Lancaster. Even in our last reverses he stood firm.' "'And it pleased you, then,' said Dick, "'to cast your eye upon this letter,' you might somewhat change your thought of him. And he handed to the Earl Sir Daniel's letter to Lord Wensleydale. The effect upon the Earl's countenance was instant. He lowered like an angry lion, and his hand, with a sudden movement, clutched at his dagger. "'Ye have read this also?' he asked. "'Even so,' said Dick. "'It is your lordship's own estate he offers to Lord Wensleydale?' "'It is my own estate, even as you say,' returned the Earl. "'I am your beadsman for this letter. It hath showed me a fox's hole. Command me, Master Shelton. I will not be backward in gratitude. And to begin with, York or Lancaster, true man or thief, I do now set you at freedom. Go, a Mary's name. But judge it right that I retain and hang your fellow, Lawless.' The crime hath been most open, and it were fitting that some open punishment should follow. "'My lord, I make it my first suit to you to spare him also,' pleaded Dick. "'It is an old condemned rogue, thief, and vagabond, Master Shelton,' said the Earl. "'He hath been gallows ripe this score of years, and whether for one thing or another, whether to-morrow or the day after, where is the great choice? Yet, my lord, it was through love to me that he came hither, answered Dick, and I were churlish and thankless to desert him. Master Shelton, ye are troublesome, replied the earl severely. It is an evil way to prosper in this world. Howbeit, and to be quit of your importunity, I will once more humour you. Go then together, but go warily, and get swiftly out of Shoreby town. For this Sir Daniel, whom may the saints confound, thirsteth most greedily to have your blood. My lord, I do now offer you in words my gratitude, trusting at some brief date to pay you some of it in service, replied Dick as he turned from the apartment. End of chapter.